Hello, welcome to another GIMP tutorial. Today's GIMP tutorial is the fourth in the Vector Art tutorial series. It's also the fourth one looking at the parts. Today, I'm going to take some of the hard work out of the parts for you. Uh, in fact, I'm not, someone else is going to do that. Um, we're going to be looking at DeviantArt. Um, DeviantArt, if you haven't come across it already, is a fantastic site for other people's artwork, whether they're professionals or gifted amateurs or just you know, people that like doodling. Um, and it's also a great place where people share resources, um, which you know, basically is what the internet's all about at the end of the day. Um, so today we're going to be looking at finding those sorts of resources on DeviantArt. And if you're, having, if you're still really struggling with the paths, then maybe playing around with other people's paths first might be a way for you to sort of get to grips with it and start doing really cool things with a kind of minimum amount of expertise or effort. So the first thing you're going to need to do is log on to DeviantArt.com. Um, and there'll be a link to that in the more info bar at the side of the tutorial. Once you're there, and um, you'll see I'm logged in as myself. If you want to find me, then uh, I'm using the same username. Click on Categories, and you want to scroll down to Resources. Um, in a future tutorial, we're going to look at Application Resources. But for today, I want you to look at Vector Resources down here. And then when you click on Vector Resources, you'll get a screen like this arrive. Now what we want to do is go over to the search bar, which is on the right hand side of the screen, and you want to type in SVG, which I think stands for Scalable Vector Graphics, but I could be wrong. And what you'll find there is a series of SVG files. That's basically the file format used to save paths in the GIMP. Um, so that's all we're looking for. There are other file formats that are used on Inkscape, on Photoshop, on Illustrator, on all sorts of other um, image programs, um, they can't be read by the GIMP. The GIMP can only read SVG files. So to save yourself a bit of hassle downloading a lot of stuff you don't need, that's the thing you want to search for, and then you can go from there. Um, if you scroll down, if you're doing this um, very soon after I've done this tutorial, um, on the front page you'll find um, these, um, the circle SVG vectors. Um, by this user is star loam or something like that um, so I'm going to click on that and these are the ones I want you to use for this tutorial and you can download it by clicking on download here and then if you're using Opera this will jump up and you can save it to your desktop if you're using Internet Explorer something similar will jump up and you just have to save it to your desktop or if you're using Firefox yada 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 you get the idea uh, I'm not going to download them because I already have these on my computer but that's where you can find those um, before I actually look at those, there's something else I want to point out. DeviantArt is fantastic for people sharing resources. Now, this user, um, his real name Martin Gillette, or Gillette, or however that's pronounced, um, with this username, is putting up his artwork for people to use, and he says very specifically he doesn't want it to be used without permission. He's also uploading a lot of resources for people to use, and has said that you know they can be used as anyone sees fit, um, and he would like some credit, you know, if that's what you know you're in it for. Now, I just want to say just a point of etiquette, really, um, with things like this, um, with um, downloading these kind of resources. People are doing this for free, you know, they're offering you something for free, and it doesn't cost them anything other than their own time to do it. But it it kind of grates on people's nerves if they've attached a file that says there's particular ways they want it to be used and um, particularly if you download a set of brushes and they say don't use it for commercial use um, you know obviously stick to that you know I mean it's only your own conscience that will haunt you but it's the kind of thing that really brings people down and if I mean this person said credit isn't necessary of course I'm gonna leave him a comment when all this is finished I'm gonna leave lots of um, hopefully send some traffic his way so you lot will check him out um, it's just to kind of keep that kind of process going you know people only really do this for the sake of helping other people and it's nice just to give people comments so just <clears throat> after that little lecture on you know the way you should be treating other you know members of the community or whatever um, I don't like the term the community but that seems to be the one that everyone bandies about um, just please bear in mind that people do this for free and you know you should you know give them credit where it's due so I'm gonna download and steal his uh, vector graphics and I'm going to use it to produce this um, this is one of the vectors that he produced uh, I'm just going to close this down uh, don't save I'm going to open up my GIMP and my layers uh, I should point out actually before I do that uh, once you've downloaded the 
sorry. Once you've downloaded the zip file, you'll need to extract the files so you get uh, a normal folder. So I've got my circle SVG folder here. Um, that's already unzipped. I've already extracted those files. Once you've extracted the files and you've got a new um, image. Uh, excuse me, this is running a little bit slow today. <coughs> oh, sorry. God, this is running dreadfully slowly. I do apologise. Um, uh, excuse me. Right, once you've got this set up, and apologies for that little delay, um, go over to your layers um, dock and click on the layers tab. And then in this white space that you've got here, right click on it and scroll down to import path. When you click on that, um, it says you can import paths from SVG. Um, so I'm going to go to my desktop and then my circle vectors and just click on this. And you'll see that what happens here, um, loads of paths have jumped up. Now the path I'm looking for is actually this one here. Um, so when I make that visible you'll see that that's what I've got but what actually happens when people upload their SVG files what they tend to do is stick them all in one file but you've actually got loads and loads and loads of paths to use um, but the one I want to play with at the moment is just that three circles uh, which was that one so I've selected that now I want to make this much much bigger you know, it's all very well and good downloading somebody else's paths, but if you can only ever use their paths the way they originally specified, then that's a little bit limited for our purposes. So what we want to do is make this bigger. The first thing I'm going to do is move the path into the center. Now the way I do that, I need to make sure I've got that path selected. I'm then going to go over to my move tool, and instead of just going straight over and moving it, I need to make sure that my move tool is set to the right function. Normally, your move tool will move layers around but the move tool can also move selections and paths and it's very important that you follow this step carefully that you select the actual paths that you want to move and not layers or anything else because that can be incredibly frustrating and you want to set it to move the active path and then you just use it the way you'd normally use a move tool so I want that in the middle and the same goes for the scale tool um, normally scale tool is set to scale layers I want to make sure it's set to paths so that when I start dragging this out and I just do it the way I would normally scale an image oh, I've kind of squashed that a bit but I'm just going to drag this and keep dragging it there is a quick way of doing this if I just enter the coordinates you'll see this is getting absolutely massive but that really doesn't matter um, SVG files take up literally no memory whatsoever so we can make this as big as we want um, and just a little bit bigger there we are and then I'm going to press scale and that will give us the background the size we want now following on from the steps that we looked at in the last tutorial I can now turn this into a selection by pressing shift and comma uh, no sorry the wrong step shift and V and that will turn it into a selection or I could have just simply pressed the path to selection um, over here and now that I've got it as a, a selection I can press control and comma and it will fill that in using the foreground colour and you see that once I deselect everything and make everything un invisible I've got a wonderful vector graphic there that's cost me very little effort um, and that's basically the way you can import other people's vector graphics and um, play around with them, manipulate them a bit I hope you found this useful um, it's particularly good if you're struggling with paths at the moment then this is a nice way to start because you can start producing really good stuff even if your own path skills aren't that useful uh, that well accomplished Anyway, I hope you found it useful, and um, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.